Our next contestant, his name is Afiq Abu Hamid, a computer network security expert from Telecom Malaysia. He's a scientist, explorer, a wanderer. How he applies STEM in his work is through computer programming and data science. He says he joined FameLab because he wants to be the very best that no one ever was, including <laughs> Dr. Abi. Let us all be amazed with Afi Abdul Hamid. Yes, yes. Planet Earth is a prison, and if humanity is to live long and prosper, we must escape it. Additionally, since in 5 billion years, the sun will turn into a red giant, making Earth unlivable means that our days as a single planet species are numbered. The challenge of escaping Earth mainly lies in overcoming the force of gravity. To do this, your spacecraft must go fast enough, about 8 kilometers per second, at such an angle that the curvature of the Earth falls away from you at the same rate as you are falling toward it. Do this 150 kilometers above my head and you can achieve low Earth orbit. But getting to orbit largely depends on your value of delta V. It's a measure of your spacecraft change in velocity caused by its fuel being converted into energy to produce thrust. This energetic reaction must be controlled in such a way that you don't explode and crash. One device has proven to be the most adept at controlling this violent reaction, the negative potential energy repayment machine, more commonly known as the rocket. This is the Ariana 6 rocket. One small step for rocket ability, one giant leap for the European Space Agency due to launch in 2020. She's got two stages that enable her to get a payload of 5,000 kilograms into space. That's about 23,000 Big Macs, mm. or 50 Donald Trumps, or a single communications <laughs> surveillance satellite. And this is how she does it. First, insert Donald Trump, of course. We launch eastwards near the equator to get a gravitational assist from the Earth's rotation like a form of giant planetary catapult. Are you ready? Let's go. Launch in T minus four, three, two, one. Lift off! Upon lift off, the main engine and rocket boosters will ignite to produce millions of newtons of force propelling the craft upwards to an altitude of 100 kilometers, nearly the edge of space. The boundary of low Earth orbit lies at 160 kilometers. That's where the rocket boosters will detach via explosive charge and the front part will separate, exposing our cargo. The main engine will burn for another 100 kilometers. We are now in low Earth orbit, where the ISS and Hubble Space Telescope live. And more than 200 kilometers away from home, the main engine will disengage, leaving the upper stage to propel the payload on its final ascent where it too will disengage, imparting on the payload all the acceleration needed to begin its own orbit. <laughs> all of this will happen sometime in three years, somewhere from the coast of French Guyana in South America. Ariana 6 will take off, waking the Amazon to life as she ascends at speeds of several kilometers per second, and going through that transformation in less time than an episode of the Big Bang Theory minus commercials. But it's not so certain, though, there exist many pressing world issues that compete for the resources it takes for Ariana to fly. But regardless of the challenges, a large part of the human future will no doubt take place in the great depths of outer space. And Ariana 6 is one step forward toward that future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe this is what's going to be left on Donald Trump in a few years' time. But before that, let us hear the questions from the judges. Thank you for that very, very engaging talk. Um, not tearing up the noise to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. Um, so my question is, um, I understand what you're saying. Well, how, how is the technology 
that, um, that, that is being funded, the research being funded, and going into IAM. How is it different from what we have now in terms of um, space? Well, first of all, I'd like you to I'd like to direct you to my YouTube channel where I do have a, a video of uh, additional information on the Ariane 6. But the main objective of the Ariane 6 is to improve upon the efficiency of its predecessor, the Ariane 5, that has been in service for more than two decades now. And the idea behind the Ariane 6 is that we're trying to make it more efficient. We're cutting down launch costs by half. ESA is trying to cut down launch costs by half. And the rate of production of these component rocket boosters are essentially enhanced. Of course, I did say in my presentation, it's one small step in rocket ability. The fundamentals have not changed. The rocket engines are still there. It's still pretty much the same basis of technology. But looking to the future, the objective is to develop a machine that is able to deliver more frequent payloads to outer space and at less than the cost of the previous model. Okay, okay, right. Um, you mentioned about improving uh, the, uh, the ability okay, to reduce the cost of uh, space travel okay, from five to six. Okay, what, how does it differ compared to the efforts that has been done by Elon Musk okay, with SpaceX? Uh, yes, uh, of course, this is uh, rather controversial, of course, because many people say that the future of the payload delivery machines into outer space is the whole reusable aspect. But I think that since we've still been using rockets and rocket boosters ever since we sent Sputnik up in 1957, and the fundamentals of the technology will not change unless, of course, there is one idea behind this thing called the orbital space elevator. That's the next giant step. That's the next leap. But, of course, the technical specifications are there, like the engine. There are follow-ups in terms of the way the engine is built. I'm a computer programmer, but I have a passion about this thing, so I can give you a layman explanation in terms of just the fundamentals. Hi, Hi. You're a computer network security, is that? Yes. You took computer science? I did electronics engineering major in microwave communication. Because I wanted to talk to aliens. <laughs> um. uh. It's tough to ask this question because you know you got it made, but uh, I need to test you at international level now. So the Vulcan engine that powered Ariane Five, and now they're going to convince you. So give me the mechanics of that and how that innovation was created because all our universities had their fundings cut. European Space Agency, Agency did the same thing for the rocket launch, which might mean that your astro structure might get lower because we need cost to propel our satellites up, right? So we're sending more satellites up, our cost will go higher. But they have cut the funding for the rocket booster research program. And yet, they came up with the PNC idea and the new Iron Seat, despite this cutting cost measure. So tell our good university representative here how you could achieve that in the analogy of Vulcan and also PNC. Okay, so how the Ariane 6 will be built is that the main engine will be the Vulcan 2.1, and that's the follow-up from the Ariane 5. Uh, the top part will be the Vinci engine, which will be manufactured by an Italian company, Avio. And if this seems rather complicated, because it literally is rocket science. <laughs> but, uh, what's, what's your question again? <laughs> how do they do that with less money? Oh, how to do this with less money? No, no, I mean, go to the new idea. They're not using Vulcan all the way now. They're yeah. the hydrogen machine thing. <laughs> how did they, they do it with less money? That's the whole point of your presentation, right? Yes. You're going to have a better rocket launch, yes. how to cost. How to build a better... How, how did they come to that? How did they innovate that? Using less money. People oh. were thinking that put more money, you get better results, right? Uh, uh, there are innovations in terms of like the new source. The, uh, let's see. 
it's going to use a liquid fuel core over the traditional solid fuel. And it will use a cryogenic fuel source, which is a fuel that must exist at cryo must be preserved at cryogenic temperatures because of the low pressures in outer space. And that's some of the... So don't you think young nations like you are wasting the time in computer network security when you could divert your patients here you know, if you have the research? <laughs> my sir, my parents are in the audience and I tell them that every <laughs> Parents love me anyway. <laughs> they say as long as you have a job and that pays well and you get married to a beautiful I'm, girl. I'm a father to a undergrad, but I'm going to say this to you. Forget everything else. Go out there to Chapman Hill. Kick everyone else down the packing order and be better than Abi because you're already hungry. Woo! 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 Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Great round of applause again to Abi. Thank you, 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 Abi. This meant a, a huge chunk of body strength on stage. So it took a while for us to clean it up. Luckily, the, the hotel didn't pen penalize us. Okay, take, take your time. Yes, please do. In the meantime, I'll, I'll entertain them with... <laughs> no, I, I, I put some there. Oh, don't go there, take care. I guess sooner or later, the European Space Agency might be calling you soon. And I guess that Apple wouldn't be able to be eaten any soon. <laughs> right? That was a wonderful presentation from Afe, a very visualized presentation from me. And now he's, he's like so tired and sitting over there, all right, thinking of the phone number for the European Space Agency, where to call them. I don't know how to call them anyway.